Hello everybody and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and welcome back to another episode of Raspberry Pi Server plus Samsung DeX. In this episode we will set up the, our first container inside the Docker and the container I chose for this video is JDEN Loader. The reason why I'm using a JDEN Loader container is quite simple. Sometimes I need to download quite big files for, from the client's servers from any basically location. And sometimes these, these files exceed 7 to 10 to 15 gigabytes in size. And not always the source that I'm downloading from these huge files gives me a full download speed. They most of the time is throttled. So yes, fine, I can go and start downloading them using a Samsung internet or other browser inside a Samsung DeX. But this is not convenient when, especially I'm using my Fold 3 to act as a DeX device. Because sometimes I need to answer a call or something, so I just connect my phone from a Samsung DeX setup and obviously I go to get the call done. But sometimes the Samsung Internet app or other browsers goes um, a bit wonky and cancels the download. So imagine if you're downloading 10 gigabytes or more file from Internet and you just connect your Galaxy device from your Samsung DeX setup or for any reason the, app, the um, browser crashes somewhere about 70% when the download is done, um, you need to start download again. So I decided uh, to use a JDEN loader for with my Raspberry Pi setup and so far everything worked great. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up your Samsung, so your JDEN loader container on your Raspberry Pi server using Samsung DeX. First thing what we need to do is to need to go and find the image of the container we are planning to use. If you go to a hub.docker.com, this is a link. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to go and check it out. And if you just type here JDEN loader and run search, it's going to be a lot of um, results showing up. We are interested in the first one. And the reason why is this is JDEN loader first version. The other option is JDEN loader uh, dash two. Um, dash two doesn't work on ARM processors. So as you can see, it's only for Linux x86-64, where this one is supports ARM64. So we're going to click on this. And if I click on the tags, uh, the latest one being released 17 hours ago, so it's been updated. And inside the Arch or OS types, as you can see, there's ARM v6, ARM v7, and, and AMD, and ARM64. My Raspberry Pi 4 is ARM64, so I know that this is going to work. So there is right now two ways for me to go and download the image. If I copy this command, it'll, and I will go to the portainer, which I showed you how to set up in a previous episode, under images, I can paste this in here, go all the way at the start and then load two words, which is docker space pull and leave like this. If I press the button, it's going to start downloading the image. Uh, this is the very convenient way to download the images when the image is just a couple of megabytes in size. I like to go and use a, the terminal to download all the containers just because it gives me the, the progress report exactly what's happening. So I'm just logged in into my Raspberry Pi server. So if we're going to just click and hold, then choose paste. And right now I'm going to run a command, which is docker pull and download this image. So if I'm going to press enter and it right now goes, uh, connects to hub.docker.com, goes and pulls the container. So as you can see, it's in the multiple chunks. So right now it's downloading. Uh, some of them is already been extracted. Actually, no, it's not extracted yet. So as you can, after downloads is finished, it's going to start extracting. So let's wait for a second or so for extract to start happening. Here we go. That's happening. So while this is going, another thing what you need to do, you need to go to my.jdenloader.org and create the account. Once you create, this is a free to register. So once you create an account, you are, you are ready to use. So I'm just going to quickly connect to my current account. Let's enter the password. Click sign in. At the moment, as you can see, there's only one says Galaxy. This is my main Raspberry Pi, which is going to add the second one next to it which is going to be DEX. But once you create your account in here, you will see nothing. It's just going to show you that there is a connection loss between the MyJDenLoader website and the server, which is fine because you haven't set up your JDenLoader container yet. So once we know that this is happening, we know that this is downloaded, actually it's already downloaded. So that, that, that means that if I go to my portainer and click on the images, I click on these arrows, uh, it's going to show me that there is another uh, image downloaded, which is JDenLoader. And it says unused. This is great. We're going to go into a container actually inside the image. If you double click on this and control C to copy, because sometimes if you go to containers and set up the container, 
once you start typing, sometimes it's going to give you a suggestion what you're trying to run. But this is sometimes shows up, sometimes doesn't, it's a bit buggy. So I just copy the name of the container uh, or the image and paste it in. So I'm just starting to set up the container. So I will name this J downloader like this. Let's go and start opening the ports. There is a couple of ways that you can start the container. This is the showing you how to um, set up via portainer. In upcoming videos, I'll show you how you can set up using a one line command or using the Docker compose files. That's in upcoming videos. So if we go back to the Docker image, if we click on the overview, scroll down, we just want to know exactly what we need to do. So this is Docker compose. I'm just going to convert this into the uh, portainer setup. So, right, let's check what we need. We need port number 3129, uh, goes to 3129. The port number on the left, you can change to whatever you want, but port number on the right, you need to leave as it is. Because this is the first container I'm running and I don't have any other containers with 3129 port, I'm happy to use 3129 uh, to 3129. Go back to portainer and inside here, I'm gonna type 3129, goes to 3129. This is, we have a portainer, uh, the JDEN loader ports sorted. Next, we go here. Let's go from the right side because it's much easier uh, to go. So first thing under resources, I need to make sure that initialize uh, or initiate is uh, ticked. Restart policy, unless stopped. Basically, that means that container or Docker and Portainer will try to restart the container as soon as it fails, unless me as a user's admin of the Portainer will basically manually force it to shut. So if I manually close or stop the container, Docker knows that user interacted with it and it doesn't need to go and start trying to uh, trying to restart. Under environments, if we're gonna open this couple of times because I think we know I think we need to add more than one or two. So under environments, so as you can see here it says environments. First environment it says my jade downloader user. So if I'm gonna click on this back into a portainer, paste that in and in here you need to uh, enter your email address that you used to create my JDEN loader account. Let's go back in here, as you can see, email at email.com. Then I'm just gonna copy the password, copy that, go back into Portainer, and say, right, the password, you will need to enter the password here. I'll do the my password and, and username later. Next one is my, G, my JD device name. So if I go back here, I'm gonna click on here, I'm gonna say paste. If I'll go to my JDEN loader, you see it says Galaxy. That's the name I chose for this. So my device name for this will be Dex. And what's the last one? The last one, go back in here. It says XD the download directory. Oh, actually, we don't need this. We can skip that. We can just click on the trash and that's it. So that is done. I'm right now gonna fill the details for my username. Just quickly, we'll do that. That's it, that's been entered. Uh, under networks, we're gonna leave as bridged. If we're using bridge network, that means that we need to open the ports. If we will change this, for example, to host, ports, we don't need to uh, map the ports because we're gonna use as a host port. It's, this is useful when you don't really need to mess around with the ports, you just say to a host and it goes directly to IP address for a semicolon 3129. But I like to use a bridge, I know I like to um, assign my own ports if required. And now under volumes, if I'm gonna Click this a couple of times because we need to set up a couple of volumes. Let's go back into JDEN loader. Right, under volumes, we see there is a one, two, three, four. We don't really need all of them. Uh, they work fine with if you set up only the config file and download file, but I will set up uh, three of them. I will leave real time um, out of here. Actually, I might reset set up that as well. Right, first thing, I need to set up the configuration folder. That's where the Docker uh, will store the, the configuration files for this container. And it says it needs to go to opt. So I'm going to copy the right side of this from the semicolons. So slash OPT, I will copy all this, go back into Portainer. And where it says container, I'm going to paste that here. Now, then I need to click bind. And now I need to enter the password inside my server. To do that, I'm going to log in. I'm going to navigate into this folder, which is mount SSD diapi user data. Why I'm using mount SSD and why this is happening, all explained, I think, in episode one. I'm going to list the directory of this. Let's do this way. So now I can see I have music folder video Docker. I have a folder Docker. So I'm going to go inside this folder. 
And inside here, I have JDEN loader folder already created. If you haven't created the JDEN loader folder, you need to write MK there. Actually, you know what? Let's do this way. I'm just going to remove this and let's pretend it's not, never happened. Here we go. So make there. I'm going to say JDEN loader. The way that's how I set up, you can set up different way, but I like to make sure that I have a folder inside the Docker folder that I created previously with the folder name JDEN loader representing the container this represents to, if that makes sense. Let's go inside this folder and then I need to create the folder number one, uh, which I'm going to say config and I will CD uh, or change directory into a config. So right now, if I type PWD, it's going to give me a path to this folder. I will click right, left click on this. Hold, left click, hold and click copy. Go back into a browser, go in here and I'm going to say paste. So right now what it basically did is I'm saying to the Docker that internal folder location this is basically exactly say it needs to be mapped to a location or config location inside the container. Let's go back to a JDEN loader. I'm going to say, right, now I need to map where downloads goes. So I'm just going to highlight all this, control C to copy. Go back to Portana, click on next line, paste, click bind, go into Termux. And now if I'm going to CD back into a beginning, I'm going to CD SSD, type by user data. I have external drive mounted inside the folder external. So if I list that, I have, you see, I have a folder drive. If I'm going to go inside the drive, I have my server backup. This is from episode two and three. And this is my config file. I just was messing around. So right now I'm just going to make there downloads. So make directory called downloads and inside directory, let's change directory to downloads inside the folder there downloads. I will create another one, which is going to be J loader. And right now, if I'm going to say PWD, it gives me a path into mount the SSD drive by user data, external drive, downloads, and JDEN loader. I'm going to left click and hold, choose copy, go back into a browser, click on here and paste that in. And that's it. I have right now mapped the downloads folder. If I will not do that, the container will download the files into internal volume, internal folder structure, which is fine. But then if I need to access them via Samba or via FTP or via terminal, uh, I will navigate to these files, but it's going to be a pain to delete them or mend them or etc. So I'd rather do this way. And next, let's go back into a list. I'm going to say, right, next, there is a log file. You can do this if you want to. I'm just going to, as you, as you can see, it's optional. Actually, let's leave those two off. Optional, this means you want to do that or you don't want to do that. Doesn't matter. Another thing what's very important is it says user and it says 1001 semicolon 100. The Diap iOS that we're using has a user by the name of Diapi and a user ID is 1000. A user group ID is 1000 as well, 1000 as well. So what we need to do, we need to go into a Portana and under environments, we need to click twice, scroll down and first line, we need to enter PUID 1000 and then P PGID 1000. What that means that I'm telling this container that to use username with ID number 1000, a use group ID with an ID number 1000. That means that the JDEN loader will run under Diapi user credentials. And that means that he has access to read and write in folders and files in the same way as I would do via terminal. So let's go back into volumes. That's set up. The last one I can delete. So we have uh, the volume set up. We have environment set up, we have restart policy set up, we have runtime set up. Let's go back. Uh, we have a name, we have a container image. So if I go all the way down and I click deploy container and fingers crossed, if I done everything correctly, it's going to give me a green light. And if I'll click on this first icon under containers, on this first icon inside the line of Jaden loader, I'll see an output of the file. And it says, here we go. The right now what's happening, Jaden loader goes to its internal servers or JDEN loader service within a container connects to its internal services and basically downloads all up-to-date packages. So as you can see, up to update is happening. It's, it's going to take about up to two minutes or so. So let's wait for this to finish. Actually, while this is done, we can go into my.jdenloader.org and click refresh. So it's refreshed. So far, it's still Galaxy. 
So it means this is not connected yet. Let's wait for a bit more. Like I said, it takes you two minutes or so. So what I'll do now, I'll give some time for this to complete. So here we are, we have right now two, Galaxy and Dex. I took another about a minute or so uh, for the container to get all these things done. But right now, if I go to myjdenloader.org, I have a Dex showing up. So I have a Galaxy, which is my main Raspberry Pi server, and this is a Dex, which we're using for this TV, for this series. So once I click on that, it logs in into the, uh, the website UI. So we have a couple of tabs. We have download link uh, collector and then settings. Under settings, you can go and check the check the settings out. It's just try not to mess around a bit because once I went and started messing quite badly with all this and it went nuts. So but you can, for example, change how many simultaneous downloads you want to have, speed limit and etc. But most of this already works out of the box, so there is no need to work. Here we go. The system information just updated. We're running Linux 64 bit and etc. Uptime is one minute. So this means the container is running for one minute and five seconds so far. Here we go. Right. So how to get the things downloaded? There is two ways. You can click on a click a link collector and let's use, uh, let's go into diapi, diapi.com. And let's say you want to download the ISO file, which is 12 gigabytes in size, for example, this one. I right click on this. I'm going to say copy the link. Go back into my JDN loader and at the bottom I click add the link. I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to say leave everything by default. If you want to automatically start unloading, you need to make sure that you tick this option here and I'll click continue. So right now the website my.jdenloader.org sends information to the container that is running here in my home on this Raspberry Pi telling Raspberry Pi, right, I had, I received instructions to download this file. So go and do the go and do the thing. So what's happening now is, is scanning the file, is checking if the file is um, available, and moves the file into the download section. So right now, as you can see, it's already done 23%. Okay, I'm downloading only 122 megabytes file, but I use this to download up to 30, 40, 50 gigabytes single file or bunch of files uh, to 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 get this done. And instead of using Samsung Internet app or other browse inside Samsung Dex. What beauty about this as well, if you go here under add the link, wait for this to actually load, it's, like, it's probably refreshing the page because you just finished downloading this. So let's give a second for this to do. While this is actually loading, there is an app that you can download from a store, which is called MyJDownloader. So if you search MyJDownloader Remote Official, you can download this app. And it's gonna sync. Or it's gonna connect to your account inside the website. So if I click open, here we go. I have right now two here. I have Galaxy and Dex. So if I click on this, uh, go into JDownloader. Loader. This is the file that has been downloaded. If I click on that, it's gonna expand and tell me what's happening. So it's actually done only sixty percent. So it's still still refreshing. On the link grabber, you can go in here and add the links. I'll show you how to get that done. So let's go back in here. File should be downloaded. I know it's still 60%. If I click on add the links, the beauty, like I said about this, is you can add multiple links. So if you received an email with 50 links that you need to go and download, you just add them one by one in each line. So like this, link four, and you just click continue and JDownloader will do the rest. So when you need to download, uh, let's say archived file in multiple chunks. You just paste the link for all these chunks into the JDownloader loader and it gets the things done. Let's go again into uh, Ubuntu, for example. I want to download Ubuntu ISO. Let's go into Ubuntu website. I want to download, I want to download, let's say this one, Ubuntu desktop. Uh, it says download now. So right now it's, it's doing this automatic thing. Here we go. I'm going to say no. I'm going to click on this and I'll go and choose copy at the bottom. I'll open my Jindan Loader app instead. Instead of using a website, I'll click on a DEX. So let's go back and click here, DEX. I'll click on Link Grabber, add the link, and I'm gonna say paste the link that I just copied from there. It tells me that I'm gonna use the link to DEX, or if I have multiple ones, I can choose that I wanna use DEX or Galaxy Server. I'm gonna use DEX. It automatically fulfills where it needs to be sent. And at the bottom, it says, auto start or detect. I'm going to say send the link. So link is better now using this app being sent to the website. If I'll go back to a website, I click on the link collector. I should see Ubuntu showing up here. 
which is great. And in a matter of seconds, this will be pushed into downloads list and it's going to start download, uh, going to initiate the download. Uh, it says already downloaded this. Fine. Uh, overwrite. It's probably I was messing around before starting recording this video. So this has been, uh, this is going under link collector. The Ubuntu should be here. So it shows that Ubuntu is downloading 16 minutes and great. Another thing, another way you can download is if you go to this app, uh, no, I don't want this. There's an option to uh, turn on the clipboard monitor, which is fine. It does work sometimes. I just turned it on. It doesn't really bother me, but like I said, it's what the, it works sometimes. Or you can use click and load, which is as well is is when you click on the link, is the and the DAX will automatically detect that you're trying to download something, give you an option. Do you want to download via something internet or using a JDownloader? But there is another way you can go and download this. So let's say if I'm gonna go into into the the Ubuntu and I want to download the server, so I'm gonna say get the server. A manual installation and I'm gonna say this one let's say I want to download this if I click on this is it this this is a download link let's double check is this is a download link okay uh, okay yeah let's wait for for message to show up I'm gonna cancel that I will let right click on this and I'm gonna say share the link and now inside the list we just need to find where is the JDownloader. downloader here you go JDownloader. loader I'm sharing the link by JDownloader. loader and the message should show up showing me that here we go popped up uh, just was hiding behind the rest of the things it automatically opens up this kind of the overlay so I'm gonna say it's automatically fulfill this I'm gonna say using DAX uh, if you tick this it's gonna create a subfold inside downloads with the package name so if I click autofills uh, there's actually this is old one let's delete this let's say I want to tell this that it's going to be Ubuntu server. So it's going to create the uh, package name Ubuntu server and the folder inside it with Ubuntu server name. I'm going to say auto start. That's it. Send the link. And now if I go back into the app, link grab is already showing up. These two is being downloaded. If I pull down, it's going to initiate a refresh. So, okay, all this happening. So where the files ending up? Because we mapped, if we go back into the browser under portainer if we go inside the container hold on let's click on this if i click on here at the bottom it will show where it's actually going so as you can see it's going inside the mount ssd that i use a data external drive downloads jdon loader that's where it ends up so if i'll go inside the terminal i am in this location if i will say list dash l I have diapi already happening ubuntu server is being downloaded and this is being downloaded so right now it says part, it means it's still in progress. The, this is a folder and this is a folder. So if I'm going to say inside diapi, uh, cd diapi, oh no, this is a zip file. So it's been loaded. Ubuntu server is a folder, should be a folder. Here we go. Let's go inside here and we have a part. ISO Ubuntu live server 64. ISO it says part is happening. Inside the Samsung my files, if I will use network storage and I'll click on the DEX, diapi, external drive downloads j downloader i have the same files so once a big file or something is downloaded i can use the samba to move those files into my internal full free storage if required or there is some files i need to just let's say download from this massive zip file i can download in here the j downloader has an option to automatically extract these files if i go here there is an option to automatically extract these files where is the j downloader Let's say add the link and it says auto extract. So if you're downloading a zip file or something, it's automatically will extract these and it's going to be easier for you to deal with the files. So this is how you get Jaden loader working on your Raspberry Pi server with Samsung Dex. This container is one of my favorite ones on my Raspberry Pi server because it saved me so much time and hassle and pain in the ass stuff just because um, I could I just was absolutely frustrating to download giant files using Samsung internet app or Chrome browser or other browsers and etc. This helped me a lot and even if there is a Android app which is called Jaden Loader which is runs inside your inside your Android system and it should be just Jaden Loader server. Jaden Loader. I try to use that as well. 
This should be somewhere here. Jaden Loader. I remember five seeing this somewhere. It is the actual Jaden Loader app that you run and is then loads inside your Android system. But I found it that once I just connect my phone, phone from a Samsung Tech setup, sometimes it crashes and I need to delete all the files that is halfway downloaded and start the download process again. Anyway, this is how you download. Another thing forgot to mention that JDownload is to be used not only to download zip files and ISO. You can download a lot and a lot and a lot of things. If I go under plugins, if I go inside this drop down that it shows up, this is a list of websites that it supports for stuff to be downloaded. So you can go and go through this list and find the website and all these websites is supported with a JDownloader Loader or JDownloader Loader supports all these websites to get the stuff downloaded. So you can download from some video sharing website, the video for on offline watching, for example. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is not a lengthy video. And in upcoming videos, we're going to carry on setting up Raspberry Pi server with Samsung Dex. If you have any suggestions, what kind of containers you want to see uh, if, uh, upcoming videos, maybe some containers that I'm planning to show is not really what you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for something else. Let me know in the comment section below and I will try to figure out what kind of container is going to be useful for your uh, requirements. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and click a like if you think what I just said is it was useful. And if you have any questions regarding Samsung Dex, we have a Samsung Dex subreddit group, 17,000 plus members ready to help you out with any kind of question you have regarding Samsung Dex. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.